All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the Galactic Explorer, Mike Hankstaback, <laughs> our UFO correspondent. It's great to be back. Lots going on, guys. Who is this? Who is this Eric Von Danigan? Guy? Eric Eric Von Danigan. Eric Von Danigan. Eric Von Danigan. He's a super interesting guy. Uh, Forty years ago, he was really kind of a, a nobody, um, but had an idea that. The aliens that people were talking about, and I guess the question that he asked to, at the beginning 40 years ago, was God an astronaut? So that kind of made the industry and science kind of take a step back. So he started looking at things from a perspective of why is everything flying? Why are they talking about everything coming from the sky? Why is it always heaven? Why are they flying carpets? These are flying horses flying. When you start to look at them in those, those periods of time, um, he started to believe that these were all vehicles. These were actual vehicles they were using, and the people at the time just didn't know uh, how to put them into words. They, there was no airplanes, you know, so it was a flying mm -hmm. carpet. Mm -hmm. And so he, he started to travel around the world to really kind of see, okay, let's go to, uh, one of the places he went to was a place called Puma Punca. Puma Punque. It's a place in, in uh, uh, Mexico, and he started to look at some of the stones that were so cut they had done with some sort of a tool and couldn't really understand how this happened. Well, the Indians that had lived there for hundreds of years, even their uh, folklore talks about the, the star people that come down. So again, what, I mean, we're we talking about gods. And so when you start to hear the same thing over and over again, you, know, you, you travel to the South America and you look at the pyramids and everything there is based on astrology. The buildings are based on astrology. Their religion is based on astrology. So then when you go to Peru, you find that same uh, sense of knowledge on uh, the planets, on, on how, where they are during certain times of the year. Um, you know, obviously, it's, it's, you want to know when harvest is. So people kind of just fall back on that. But, but like the Mayans, one of the peculiar things the Mayans were able to pick up on uh, the planet wobbles. Yeah. I, I don't think we knew that till the 60s. Maybe, maybe you know, the early part of the 50s. But the Mayans knew that right from the get-go. So how did they know that the planet wobbles? So are these, again, now we start to look at the bigger picture. You start talking about, they had their, the Mayans believed in flying serpents. So you're like, well, was it really a serpent? Or was it maybe these cigars that we see around today that everybody identifies with and they really didn't know have another name for them? Mm -hmm. So Eric Von Daniken really, uh, at that time, now listen, he was also ostracized. He was told uh, that he's, you know, all you are is just a story maker. There's nothing real about what you're saying today. And this went on for 40 years with him. And today, uh, he's a, uh, a leading advocate of across the board on UFOs and phenomena aerial phenomena that we're seeing today so he is putting on huge presentations across the nation and you know people matter of fact everything's just sold out nobody there's no no additional room there's just so many people want to hear what he has to where'd say where'd you hear about this guy um he, he was actually kind of actually the book that he wrote was called uh, chariots of the god oh. so there was a movie made about it as yeah, well it sounds familiar and so the book really t the book asked questions about particular pieces of artwork what are they trying to represent? Um, one of the Mayan kings is sitting in some sort of a device, and they start looking at it. He's controlling something with his feet, and he's got his hands on something, and he's got his mouth on something. And he, Eric Von Daniken was the first guy to come out and say, that is a, he's in some sort of a craft or some sort of a ship, and he's, he's flying it. So people from a pseudoscience perspective, this guy is a raving lunatic. I mean, he's just so far out there. And today, what they're finding out was, and I think really what he brought to the table was, he went to Egypt, he went to South America, he went to Peru, and he started finding the same thing at each of these locations. And during this period of time, there was no communication between these people. Still trying to understand, how did the South Americans right. know to do pyramids? Yeah. How did they do this in Egypt? How did they do this in China? There's pyramids now they're finding in China. They just found more pyramids in Antarctica. There's, now they're saying there's pyramids in Bosnia. Um, so he has literally the awakening uh, has been something that has been obviously long time happening, but now people are really starting to see what he was talking about. So now you look at Peru and they had these um, large faces with these big eyes and you couldn't see these drawings unless you were in the sky. 
So they go to Easter Island and in a cave underground, and, and again, now I'm curious as how these guys even had light under there to do this, they carved those same faces into the stone. Easter Island was just that. It was an island. It was 4,000 miles from any landmass. Of course, these people are all extinct now. They actually made these big heads and had them all surrounded on, on the, on the right. island itself. But they didn't, until the communication got what it is today, we didn't know that these, all these things were the same. And now that they can start to travel and start to see, hey, this was the same as here. They're just calling it something different. If you look at some of the, the, um, the very, very intricate uh, carvings that were done, these were concrete carvings, obviously, and everybody was carrying a purse. And he started noticing that this purse seemed to be universal with the Egyptians, with the, with the, uh, the uh, Mayans, with all these different groups. And he started talking to a NASA astronaut one day, and the NASA astronaut pulled up a picture, and all the astronauts carry this life support system with them that's actually hooked up to their system as they're getting onto the, to the, mm, to really? the, to the rocket. So he's like, what if they, the people at that time were witnessing these guys carrying some sort of a life support system with them, but didn't know, how to, mm. didn't know what it was, so it just shows up as a purse mm -hmm. on all these different drawings. That's so cool. So it is. It's amazing man, when you really start to think about the bigger picture of it because how could um, Peru... Uh, know what South America was doing. How could right. South America know what the Egyptians were doing? Right. So it just became one of these things that where nobody really s seemed to do that. So Eric von Daniken started to do that. He started to show everybody, hey, wait a minute. How could they possibly know this? Was this just a lucky guess? Did they know that um, the pyramid or he went to, I think one of the first places he ended up going was India. And India had... Uh, what do they call it? They actually had a name for them, but they look like they were pyramids, but they look like these flying craft called, what were these things called here? Hang on a second. Let me look it up real quick. Aiden, go through your pictures. This is probably in there. Uh, it is. I put it in there. Oh, man, it's right here. Uh, they're called Arumka Vamanas. Okay. And they were actually flying vehicles. And if you look at the towers. Aiden, it's this one right here. Look. Yeah. If you look at the towers, they Aiden. built. It's that one. Through India. Dude, these towers are amazing. They are so intricate. There is so much going on with these actual towers that you're like, well, did, were guys in there with chisels? Come on, man. You, you would break off the hand. There'd be no way you could do some of the really small, intricate work that's required to do. Mm -hmm. So he started looking at, hey, how are they doing this? What's mm -hmm. causing this? And India, even today, I think I'm going to put that on my bucket list because it's definitely one of the most amazing places on the planet to go see that makes you scratch your head and go, how could somebody do such intricate artwork? And it's hundreds and thousands of years old. So he started to really look at that. So then from there, he went to Egypt and started to talk to Egyptologists. Now, Egyptologists um, still don't have a view that this has anything to do with aliens. They still believe it was all uh, based on humankind. Then there's two beliefs in this, in this world. You've got the scientific side that says, hey, we started from apes and we kind of came down the, the road. Mm -hmm. And you have a religious side that says, no, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus and God did all this and made us who we are today. Whichever way you believe, we, we end up coming at the end, we're the greatest thing on the planet. Mm. So, and yet, there's got to be more to this in the bigger picture than what's really going on. We wouldn't have all this um, information floating around today that's so, I mean, look at the guys that would initially went with Dr. Greer. They went to D.C. They uh, did Project Disclosure. They brought in 40 military personnel that were all verified as who they were. Now, Dr. Greer is a doctor. He was an emergency room doctor. Oh, there they are. There's the, okay, What? explain what these are. Now, the center one, the Ramana. Is that as big as you can get it, Aiden? That is, that is the actual craft they said they flew around in. Oh, oh. Now, okay. the towers on either side are, these are structures that are in India today. These are religious uh, towers. And, it's, and what is that thing that goes through the center of them? In the middle one or the, on the, the end? In the middle one on each side, there's like two things that go up. Uh, you know what? I'm not sure. They showed. They were trying to show some sort of uh, anti-gravity material that would actually let that thing take off and land. Huh. But they talk about these things flying around in their religion and, and actually having fights in the air, shooting each other down. So, of course, what did the Indians do? They designed the buildings to look just like that flying craft did. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is that an accident? And, and if you look at the detail, I mean, these things are huge, monstrous. And where are these at? These are in India. India. 
I mean, just just amazing. And so that's where from this is really where Eric Von Danigan really started to put together this whole idea that the gods were really uh, astronauts. Mm. And so he said it's, it's one of the best places in the world to go because so much of what they created is still there. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think the, like, potential alien sightings back then in those times, in the times of, like, the Mayans or the times of the ancient Egyptians, do you think that aliens maybe weren't as sophisticated as they were, like, in the 90s or in the 80s? <laughs> Because my question is, because they have those those packs on them, right? Those bags that right. you say would be like life support. Right. But then you hear like stories of like the Zimbabwe encounter where there was just these aliens wearing black suits and they were just skin tight black suits. That's all they had. And they were standing there just telepathically communicating with them. And I've actually heard that a couple of times. Believe it or not, NASA has those same uh, suits now. They're getting rid of all the big heavy space suits. They've gone to a skin like suit that fits over your body that. Almost you like That's a what skin. I'm wondering if over the time, if we've been visited by different species of aliens. Well, listen, Eric Von Daniken said to no, no avail that when the, uh, um, the uh, shoot, let me think of this group now. The, one of the groups that were coming here, uh, they were really kind of like fallen angels. And they were told, hey, the, while you're here, let, the, let these people do their work. There's no having any sex with them. And they actually came down and ended up having sex with us. So they believe through gene manipulation and through these things actually spawning us, this is how we all kind of came to be. And they believe this happened over about 50,000 years. So this, this millions of years we hear about, you know, hey, you were an ape. I, I, don't, I never kind of bought off on that to begin with. I mean, you're an ape. I said, well, why aren't we still changing? Why aren't we still evolving? Mm. I mean, I would think if it, if it happened then, it would still be happening today. Yeah. I don't see monkeys getting a whole lot smarter. Elephants aren't talking. Yeah. You know, so where would that, at, at what point does it stop? Mm-hmm. And also, why the monkey? Why not the elephant? Yeah. Well, you know, listen, if you really look, if you go back and look at the, um, uh, the gentleman who's the one who came up with this whole concept, um, I mean, I'm, I'm cracking up. His name slips my mind. Darwin. Uh, Darwin. Thank you very much. He went to the uh, Galapagos, looked at the islands here. He only spent two weeks and then came up with this idea that this is what happens. And, and he did this through birds that were there because birds had the same bird that was on a different island had a curved beak. So that he could reach inside these cactuses and pull out the seeds, mm. but it was the same bird on the other island that had a straight beak. So he started to believe that through your environment, that's what actually changed us. Right. But again, he spent two weeks there, and all of a sudden, that is law. That's we all hear that now. We all came. This is how we grew up. It was you know chimpanzees, and then we were walking, and then all of a sudden, now we're smart. And so he he started to look at that and say, no, that that can't be. That it just can't. It, it would still be happening today. Yeah. Animals would be still changing. We, we would see in the last 10,000 years that something has happened to these animals. And he goes, we're not seeing that. Hmm. He goes, so, but if you go back and you start looking at when these guys started talking about gods or there was even pictures, and I, and I meant to get some of these as well. If, if you look at the 14th and 15th century, these pictures that were actually painted and there's something up in the sky in the back behind it, you know, whether it's the Virgin Mary and some guy's pointing at it and his dog's looking at it. So these things have been going on for so long that people didn't really know what to call them. And then listen, even through the 70s and 80s here, people were kind of, you're kind of a clown or a nutcase if you believed in this stuff. Um, you know, that they've come out now and said that President Kennedy was killed because he was right. going to release information on this. Yeah, that's what a lot of people say. That's, so, a, that's a popular belief. Well, and what they did was, and, this, and the way came up with this, was supposedly there's a burn document that was found i want to say like six or seven years ago and somebody returned it in uh to a mufon group and it talked about what is what is mufon uh mufon is a mutual ufo network okay they were created in the early 90s to kind of be that group that really kind of investigates hey what's going really going on with no agenda they had no agenda it was just really kind of find out what the truth was so as this group uh, started to mature. Obviously, listen, it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And now, like I said, when I've actually submitted some, some film to these guys on, hey, what, what am I looking at here? What is this thing? So they're a huge organization now. I mean, a monster organization. And they have um, now implemented some programs with David Greer, to, who is Dr. David Greer, who was... Stephen Greer. Or Stephen Greer, I'm sorry. Yep. Who, who was the uh, guy responsible now for kind of bringing this this whole thing to the forefront with the, with the 40 people that he brought. Um, one of the guys that was there talked about buildings being on the dark side of the moon. Um, he was a, he was in the Navy. He had a top security clearance. 
Um, he said that when they brought him in, and he was going to be handling video and film that came back from combat missions. And he goes, he got, he got brought into a room one day. He said, the guy said, stay here, wait right here, I'll be right back. And he, and he said, I hadn't even gotten my, my clearance yet. And he goes, so I'm standing in this dark room where they're developing a film, and the guy says, hey, man, you want to see something really cool? Come over here. So he's like, oh, okay. So he goes, I go over there and check it out. And he starts showing me buildings on the dark side of the moon. And he said to me, these aren't ours. So Aiden, that's your fucking cue, bro. So when you start looking at that, you know, again, going back and kind of looking at the, at the bigger picture, like what? So this guy can't be lying. I mean, is he? Would he really get up here? Would all 40 of these people have such fantastic stories that um, you would say, no, this guy's lying. The one guy that talked about 40 different creatures that were coming here, 40 different aliens or 40 different terrestrials, ETs that were coming here. Um, the, one of the former prime ministers of England said the U.S. has been dealing with a group called the Tall Whites for like the last 15 or 20 years. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure this is the conversation that got sh- uh, shadow banned. So that's probably what it got. The, right tall the, the Tall Whites. The Rockefeller Whites. The Rockefellers are in control. They don't want us to. They Dude, the don't Tall Whites. Are, they're, um, is that the very, one for Men in Black? No. Could, uh, Explain. These guys don't know about the Tall Whites. We got we to gotta educate these, these newbies on the Tall Whites. The Tall Whites were a group of very Nordic-looking um, extraterrestrials, very tall, light hair, uh, just very, very big. Uh-huh. There was some talk that in the early 30s that there was a guy that was Google basically his name was friend. Thor, Google and he was a tall white, and he was working within the Senate and Congress. So if you look him up online and you pull him up, this guy looks like um, a very tall, Nordic, slack jawed, you know, just a really good looking human being or alien, whatever he is. Like a Viking. Like, uh, like more a like a Viking, Viking than anything else. Like something on the Rumpelmints logo. So, yeah. Mm. Very cool. I mean, but, but again, <laughs> so this, at the now time. I understand. What? Yeah, at the, at the time when this guy from, from uh, Canada came out, he said, hey. I don't know. Look up tall whites now. We're talking about tall whites. Yeah, the tall whites. So whatever we're talking about, just try to find Aliens. It. And they're aliens. But he said that, you know, UFOs were as real as planes that fly over your house. I mean, there he was just, he said, there's no denying it. They're there. You know, we know they're there whether the government wants to talk about it. And, and I think, again, you know, in the bigger picture, that if, if the planet, let's just say the... These are the tall whites. Elon Musk. There we go. Others talk about it. But that, oh, okay. see I, the blonde I, next to him? That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's really kind of what they say they look like right there. Now I see our boy up there at the top. Yeah, right, go to that one up there. Nope, yeah, the next one over. Nope, right there. Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden. Do you Snowden. think he's a tall white? So, well, I mean, listen, he's, he's living in Russia right now, and I'm sure they're going to let him stay there as long as he can continue to tell them secrets, because once he runs out of secrets, he's coming back to the U.S. Yeah. They're going to send his ass back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think he, I mean, he's definitely not going to come back to the U.S. because he's going to go to prison if he oh, does. Well, I was going to say, it wouldn't, be a, it wouldn't be a choice. Yeah, it wouldn't be a they choice. Would, the, the Russians will hand him over go, as a, hey, I know you guys want this guy, so here, we're, we're your friends. I think yeah. the Russians are keeping him, are letting him sit there and be safe and be comfy because it's kind of like a fuck you to America. I, I definitely go with that. I definitely yeah. go with that, for sure. They, um, like I say, I think that they think they've got the upper upper hand with having a guy like him. Yeah. So, I mean, I've listened to him talk. He's definitely a smart guy. Mm-hmm. Definitely an intel guy, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, is he playing the game? Probably. Um but somebody somewhere is dealing with, and I think this is how it works out. I think each country has found a UFO. And yeah. I think that each country is kind of doing what they do to develop that information as quickly as possible. And I think whoever's running the show is kind of watching that, trying to figure out, okay, who's my best student here? Mm-hmm. Who's really the smartest of all the groups? Do you think it's like an episode of Shark Tank where they're just like waiting for the best investment? I do. I do. I think, I really? th- think there's a couple things going on. And I think we talked about this last time. I think that, when you go back and if you look at humanity and how many times we've been wiped off the planet and you're back on the planet and then wiped off the planet again, um, and whether this is through um, natural selection or if it's through the Great Flood or if it's through uh, some sort of virus or disease. Or meteor. Uh, meteor, whatever it was, um, would kill everybody off. And then all of a sudden, it, it, somehow the Earth would repopulate. And so today, there's more people on the planet today than ever recorded history. Mm-hmm. Why is that? And I think if you look at one thing that has changed more so than anything, it's, it's the way that um, we develop and, you know, cast out from our cars all the carbon dioxide. The planet likes carbon dioxide. The trees like carbon dioxide. Mm-hmm. So 
I think that we became so good at that that that's really what they wanted. So I think we're kind of like a bacteria. I don't think, the, you know, it's the same way as if we see a bug on the ground, we kind of look at it and walk over it. Mm-hmm. I think they kind of do the same thing with us. And I think they monitor us, though, to obviously see what the health of us is. You know, you want, want the bacteria to keep doing what it's doing. Mm-hmm. And I think when you look at, at kind of the history of mankind, I mean, we live near the water, we overpopulate, we destroy everything. You know, if you look at a good virus or a good, you know, toe fungus, you, mm-hmm. get, you know, and pretty soon all of a sudden it's, the toe fungus is taking the nail off. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of what happens here. And I think so they start to watch that. Um, re- here recently in Egypt, they're, now let me back up. About 40 years ago in the Sinai Desert, they found this green glass. And they couldn't really figure out where the green glass came from other than the guys who were head of our nuclear program here back in the States knew that when they set these bombs off in, in Vegas, in, Las, uh, in Nevada, that they, right near the center of where the blast was, the, the sand would melt and it would turn green. So they came back and started looking at the rocks and like, well, I mean, check this out. They found one of the, uh, on King Tut's um, coffin, they found this green beetle. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't figure out where this green beetle came from. Where did they get this stone from? And they said it's definitely from, you know. Find the green beetle. 4,000 degrees what it takes to, to melt sand. So it's, an, it's, it's obviously a big event that takes place. The Egyptologists have always said, well, it's a, um, it was a meteor strike. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the ancient alien guys are like, okay, well, where? Where yeah. did it hit? Well, you know, the sands can carry, can cover up everything. They cover up pyramids. So they kind of had, okay, we'll take a back seat to this. Um, four weeks ago, they found a carved picture of what looks like a bomb. I mean, just like the A-bomb, if you look at, remember what the A-bomb looks like, it's a guy dropping it from his hand, and on the left side, or on the right side of the picture is this mushroom cloud. Mm. So they just found this. So now the Egyptologists are going like, aha, you know, it's too peculiar. And I think if you look, I think those pictures are up there too. I, I think I gave you those pictures. Yeah. So they also had um, uh, spaceships that were on there or, or extraterrestrial crafts that were look like your traditional saucer that they outlined as well. So um, three weeks before that, they found these hands. They were steel metal hands. They found 16 pairs that were 3,600 years old. So um, it's these type of things that make you go, well, well hold on a second, man. All right well, right. well, all right. Let's do this. How do you know they're thirty six hundred years old? Yeah. What 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 do you think is the most legitimate, verifiable evidence that we have of aliens? Like, I know there's all these crazy things people find, and you know, you can find this hieroglyphic of a of a hydrogen bomb, you know, or see all these things, and you can make all these these assumptions about it, or all these connections to it. But what do you think is like the most concrete evidence of this stuff or the most concrete like encounter or sighting or whatever it is well and well here's the thing no matter you know it's funny if you talk about certain events people well if i could just see what bigfoot looks like Mm -hmm. and then you get a picture like well that's not that's not really him that's not oh no i think you're gonna have a problem i think even if tomorrow if aliens landed and we're shaking everybody's hand and going okay we're here there'd still be people going no that's not real that's not real that's all that's so i don't think there's any one event i think it's more when Eric von Daniken came out and started saying what he was saying, the scientific community was looking at him like, with pseudoscience, you're an idiot. But for whatever reason, the rest of the planet started to get it. They started to see the same things that he was seeing. I mean, you know, does God really fly around on a carpet? Somebody was flying around on a carpet. They wouldn't have said Aladdin. That. I mean, yeah. So these things that are flying and there's wars going on and these things that are happening have to be looked at more than just like, well, it was just somebody's great imagination. Well, n- no, that's, that's not, that's, that's your opinion. But when you look at each of the cultures that are out there, they all seem to have something um, unique about what they do, but it's also shared. So again, when you start looking at the stars and we start talking about astrology and we start talking about um, different times of the year, they all seem to have this same thing in common. Well, they all couldn't be so good with the stars and planets. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to track like Venus, but it's crazy because it's, it, it moves so fast across the sky. Even in the summertime, when we go from summertime to wintertime, <clears> the sun moves real quick. And so it, it moves, actually, the sun uh, moves farther north. And it does it like in a couple of weeks because the, as the Earth starts to rotate around. 
But how would you know that back then? I mean, where do these people get their knowledge to even ask that question? Yeah, what what do they say about t- for them to actually for uh, the Egyptians or the Mayans or whoever it was that were able to account for the the equal? Is it what it's, what's called the wobble? It's called the equinox. The, wob- the equinox of the wobble, correct? I I can't remember exactly, but it was like you would need to take measurements for like over a hundred years or something like that to be able to account for the wobble of the Earth. To pick or up it on was it. more than that. It was like maybe like maybe like five hundred years or something. It could have been yeah, it could have been some crazy number because again, now the wobble happens yearly. That's what gives us our seasons. You know, right. as it, as it, it kind of you know if the planet's like this and it kind of rocks this way, north now has become farther down and and you start to work yourself up, and it becomes a, a whole different. Yeah, it's the equinox. The equinox. I mean, you can really tell by the way the light changes too when it starts to shift because the way the light hits in the summer definitely hits different than in. the Oh yeah, winter. for sure. I mean, my grass notices, and I, and I, really and I can see it in the yard. I've actually got some question. things marked, like where the first day of winter is and where the first day of summer is. So you you can track it by the shadows. <laughs> you did, and that's exactly. Right. And I just put rocks by it, and of course, it's my own little thing that I've, that I've done there. But um, so going back and look at what they've done, you're like, okay, I, I get that. But, you know, of course, the, the question comes up, where do these cultures go? Where do the Egyptians go? Where do the Mayans go? You know, oh, was, they, got, they got mixed up with the Spanish, and the Spanish had diseases, and they died because that's just too convenient. Mm-hmm. Mike, was there a time... Too convenient. Was there a time yeah. in your life before, like, was there a time or, like, some sort of event that happened where you just started paying attention to the sky? Or was it a time you just never... Because I can remember... A time like up to, until recently, I never pay attention or look at the sky ever during the day. Sure, like I like who, the, how many people actually take a couple minutes of the day to pay attention to what's going on? They in the don't. Sky? You're too busy on your phone. You're driving. You're looking at your laptop. You're do, working on your computer. Whatever you're doing, talking to somebody. Like very, very. I bet you less than one percent of people on on the planet spend more than five minutes a day looking at uh, paying attention to what's going on in the sky. Sure. Unless sure. you see an airplane or a helicopter or something that like catches your attention. You gotta a slow blimp. down and let the light in, man. Yeah. Look up. Well, I, I think too that some people you're either what I've noticed with some people is that they're more aware of things than, than others. And it's almost a natural thing. Um, you know, again, f- kind of for instance, I'm with a bunch of guys, we're traveling, we're doing a big backpack trip through the mountains. I happen to see a deer with a fawn and they're they're kind of jumping around. And she's playing with this little thing, and I, and I didn't get a chance to stop and see the other guys yet so they could even see it. So as I turned around to talk to them, two of the other guys who were in the group had seen the same thing, but the other four were completely oblivious to it. Mm-hmm. So some people just have that natural ability, I yeah. think, to be more interested in what's going on. Um, you know, uh, stargazing. So stargazing starts out of stargazing, and all of a sudden when you see something like, well, what is that? Why is it doing that? So that's where, I mean, for me as a Boy Scout, that's what kind of started for me. Right. Um, we're out camping one night. We're, we're all kind of having a fun time. And we see a, a what looked like a meteorite. And it probably was. Yeah. You know, but it, it, I was like, wow. Dude, I can't believe, I can see that with my eyes. You know, being a young guy, you don't realize that. And so you start looking at, at additional things. And I, even in our last podcast, we talked about, I want to say it was 94. Um, I'm coming back from Tampa. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And there's this great big gray football shaped thing at the top of that tower. Right. I sent you that picture of where the building was next to it. You talked about that in the last podcast, yep. and there was other people coming in the comments saying they saw the same thing. Really? Yes. See? So, dude, when I saw that that time, I'm like, dude, it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's rush hour traffic. And I'm looking at this thing like, nobody else is seeing that? So I'm thinking, well, okay, it's a blimp. And it got off, and it's got caught at the top of the tower. Yeah, yeah. The weird thing was... That the, the line, there was a line that went from the from this whatever it was to the top of the tower, but it had a it was there was slack in it. It wasn't pulled tight. So I know this is a five hundred foot tower. I know that five hundred feet above the ground, that wind is whipping pretty good. Mm-hmm. So that thing would have been moving, but it didn't move at all. And I really I mean, you're so like, well, if nobody else is paying attention to it, it can't be really anything. Man. Right. But I couldn't get that thing off of my mind. And so at the time there was nothing there to say, wow, it was as big as that building. They built this 10-story building almost right next to the tower when you're coming across the Howard Franklin Bridge so you can see it. And I'm, I'm like, it was as big as that building. It literally was as big as that building. And so I, uh, probably eight or nine months after the fact, 
I actually went to this facility. It's still there. There's a huge fence around it. You can't get into the building. You're not going to walk into it. You have to, there's a security. So when I, I rang the, the buzzer and the guy's like, hey, all deliveries go around back. I'm like, listen, I, I'm, I don't have a delivery. I got a question for you though. And he's like, yeah, what is it? And I said, hey, about nine months ago, I saw something at the top of your tower that was either caught on the tower. And I'm just trying to confirm it was there. And, he, and the first thing he said to me is, sir, I want you to get off the property. I'm like, excuse me? I'm just asking us, get away. And so he said, just said, get away from the fence. Yeah. And then I, he wouldn't talk to me anymore. There was no more question coming up. Yeah. So, you know, again, was that real? It was something. Mm. It, if people chimed in, so they must have seen it also. Well, that's what I'm saying. You can get away with so much shit in the air. Because no one's paying attention. Nobody's staring at the sky. Four ever. o'clock in the afternoon, hmm. not a thing. Not a thing. Doesn't even have to be that high. It could probably just be like 10 feet in the air and people wouldn't see it. Dude, like I said, this was 500 <laughs> yeah, feet. Right. This was 500 feet. This wasn't like, you know, like you're, even I watched the uh, the, the um, uh, space shuttle flew by here the other night. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. It was in a great location. Watched the whole thing go by. If you didn't know it was a space shuttle, you'd have thought it was a plane. There was no flashing lights. It was just a straight line, but it was a bright colored light. And this thing is moving at 25,000 miles an hour. Damn. But it looked like a plane that was moving, moving at four or 500 miles an hour. Is that how fast the rockets go? 25? So, well, the, the space shuttle does. The space shuttle goes 25,000 25, miles an hour. God damn. God. Well, see, that's why when they yeah, have like a part, all this space debris up there floating around, that it's moving also at 25, it'll punch a hole oh, yeah. right through the side of this thing. Hmm. So they're always constantly looking at space junk and trying mm. to figure out. But again, watching this thing go through the air, I mean, you wouldn't, if you didn't know it was coming through that night, you just mm-hmm. thought it was a plane. I know the people who was like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm watching the space shuttle fly over. <laughs> right. Sure you are. Whatever. Go, on. Yeah. go enjoy your beer. <laughs> yeah. Where were you at? <laughs> I was over in Tampa. I was doing some, uh, I had a lady over there I was working for. Uh-huh. And um, it was, you know, 10 o'clock at night. It's in a great area. It's, at, it's in a very, very well-to-do neighborhood. It's at the end of the road, right over the bay. Um, I've got a perfect view. I can see everywhere. I can see over to McDill, and I can see over down to, to the to Howard Franklin. Nice. Um, right at the point. Matter of fact, there's no houses there. The, that lot is at the end of this piece of property is going for $10 million. Mm. So just to give you an idea of the kind of the area that, that I'm in. Yeah. But nice and dark. I mean, I can see everything out there, and just a really, really cool event That's to, super cool. to watch. You, you know, watched it with, like, uh, binoculars? No, right? just, just, open, just, just your eyes, man. Just okay. your eyes. Mm. Didn't have any problem watching it whatsoever. That's cool. So those little type of events, you know, that start to happen. And then, you know, my son had a couple things happen. He's like, dude, I just saw something so weird tonight. You know, and it, this was in our neighborhood. Now, if you look at this area we live in here. Yeah, that's my, I have a problem with this area because there's not enough UFOs in this area. There's <laughs> yeah. like, if you look at the map, Aiden, if you can find the map of UFO sightings in the United States in the past 10 years, it shows you all of the reports. Because people report UFO sightings every, every Absolutely. day. Absolutely. And this is like one of the dead zones. The west coast of Florida. You think there might be more activity with the military base? Because aren't they usually... Well, it's funny you said that because I, that? I actually watched... They were doing... Special operations will run certain uh, vehicles at certain times of the year. So these Ospreys they have that the Marines use for special operations. They were flying them around one, one weekend. And I knew that's what they were. So I kind of went outside to go watch them. And this is what I sent to MUFON. As I'm watching this... And I, and I had my, my phone out, and I'm kind of zeroing in on this one Osprey, and I, you know, it's probably 25 or 30 miles away. And I wasn't trying to videotape this, but something shoots out of the side. <laughs> I like to have the aliens <laughs> zoom out. Park. That works. <laughs> Crucial. <laughs> See, look at that, man. Uh, Florida's looking a little yeah, hot. Zo- zoom, in on, hot. zoom in on Florida, actually. Florida's looking hot. I thought they were all over on, like, the Ooh, We're looking Beach. real hot right now. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Those are all you, Mike. That's yeah, exactly what it is. Every Mike, month. Mike, Mike. <laughs> Dude, there's something in the air every single night. Actually, this okay, area I was, is I'm, I'm way off. I thought le- what I saw, there was like none in this area. And they, I, the, all the ones that I saw in Florida were like centered around the Cocoa Beach area. Well, this one's definitely legit. Well, listen to a picture over there. People are more aware today. You know, so they're, they're kind of, they're a lot more apt to report something today than they were 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, everybody has a phone now, so they can pull it out and record that event as well, whatever it is. Oh, look, the Northeast is real hot. I mean, so, yeah, could all those people be wrong? I have a question about the frequency. Do you think that the increased frequency of UFO sightings has anything to do with the privatization of space travel now that it's moving to individuals who might control our access to planets, moons, interstellar space instead of governments, that they might be able to influence an individual more than an entire government? I think so. Well, listen, the real key to the privatization of space is so that you no longer can ask legal questions mm. to like, um, what's it called? Um, you know, where you, 
you, uh, what is it called? You can actually go through and ask for certain data from certain industries um, and ask for that data. So, and I can't, there's an actual name point. I can't right now slip my mind, but you can go in and ask for this. When you're a private individual, you're not required to give that. Okay. So Elon Musk, if you want to see what, I mean, there's a whole group of people that say, hey, we never went to the moon. We couldn't go. We didn't have the capabilities of going then, and we certainly don't have the capabilities of going now, or we would have already been there. We would have. So um, they would petition, oh, the Freedom of Information Act. They would petition NASA through the Freedom of Information Act for information, and they had to give it up. Mm-hmm. Elon Musk does not have to give it up. Mm. He doesn't have to release anything to you that's all privatized. It's all intellectual property. That Correct. Point. Correct. Mm. So Bigelow, Bigelow is another aerospace guy. He used to own the Skinwalker Ranch. Skinwalker Ranch is a huge thing going on with it right now. I don't know if you guys have been watching that, but it's no, been what really is that? Really interesting. Skinwalker Ranch is in Utah. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's bro. been based on aliens, UFOs. Skinwalkers are a Navajo belief, and when the Utes, the Paiutes, and the Navajos were fighting. The Utes turned on the Navajos and, and supported the the, uh, the military or the, the the cavalry at the time, and so the the uh, Navajos were made to walk from Arizona to New Mexico. A lot of them died. It was a, so it's, you know it's a, it's a, it's an ugly story, um, but they said because the Utes did that to them that they created this thing called the Skinwalker, and have cursed this area. Well, the interesting thing is that this particular ranch, the Skinwalker Ranch, was owned by several groups who've all sold it. The last guy that owned the place, Ray used to raise cattle and they were these real high end. So he was really involved with what he did. He got to know the sheriff at the time. The sheriff was um, like, like to ride as well. So one day they were talking and he said, Hey, I'm missing three of my prize heifers. I don't know where they're at. They're somewhere here on the farm, but I don't know where they're at. He said, well, hey, listen, let's get together Saturday. We'll take the horses out. We'll go ride and we'll go find them. Mm-hmm. So they rode all day. They couldn't find them. So they came back. And he said he wanted he was I want to go in the, the one of the horse stables and grab a, a hoof scra- scrape to get some stuff that was in his got caught in his horse's hoof, and he goes when he walked over to this large uh, room and opened the door those three cows were in there stacked on top of each other, and stacked he, how stacked on they were standing on each other's backs standing Alive? standing uh, they, they thought they were close to death, but the sheriff said no like, there was snot coming out of its nose and it was still had like a you could see the blood I guess pumping the neck he said if you pull them down and maybe get, put some water on them. They might come back to life, and they did. So, if they were, how are they not limp? Like if their legs were. St- I, well, I don't. They didn't get into all the details. He just said when I opened the door, the cows were stacked on top of each other. Okay. Now this is a sheriff, and he's like, I, those, the the people that own the property are obviously they're they're gone. They're not even around anymore. So on what the. What are you sh- thinking? It's just a really funny visual to see three cows well, standing yeah. on top of each well, other. Like, <laughs> how is that alien related? What is what's so scary about that? I mean, other than being weird. So Sometimes on the last, that's all it takes to freak people out. Is just do something a little bit out of the ordinary. Well, I think, <laughs> that's well, see, pretty he, out of the ordinary. Yeah. <laughs> well, even when he got there, he said he never understood that. But the guy had locks on everything: locks on the doors inside, locks on the doors outside, locks on the doors around the barns, locks on. He goes, everything was locked up, and he just said, "Hey, it's a very dangerous place." And the sheriff said, "I'd never, you know, that's fine. If that's that, that's your deal. Then that's your deal." So on th- Tuesday night, the nephew of the last owner was on the show. And they were talking to him, and he said, he goes, so, so what's it like to be out here today? He goes, it's just weird because of all the strange things that happened. He goes, well, talk to us a little bit. What, what was really strange? What was one of the first things you saw? He, the guy said, well, hold on. He goes, well, let me ask you about this. He goes, there were three dogs that were killed out here. And the guy goes, there was. That day? No, they were killed back in the mid-90s. Okay. And so he said, where were these dogs killed? At? He goes, matter of fact, they were just killed out of here. Let's go take a look. So they walk over to this particular area, and he said, so, well, we had heard that they had been killed. And the guy said, well, not only were they killed, they were crushed into the ground. And the guy goes, like, what do you mean crushed into the ground? He goes, like something came above the top of them and crushed them into the ground. And there was also a big burn mark all the way around each of the dogs on the ground. The guy goes, well, how did that happen? He goes, well, hold on. He goes, let me back up. He goes, we used to see these blue uh, uh, orbs. And he goes, we always felt they were malevolent, but we really didn't know. And he goes, oh, we're watching a blue one bounce down off this mountaintop and it comes down and it goes into the bushes and that's when our dog started going crazy so the dogs chased him into the bushes and while we heard him yelp and when we walked inside there and the guy goes oh so this is what you heard and the guy said no i was there i was there the day this all went on he said uh two weeks later after this event had happened because my uncle started to really think hey we need to get out of here this thing's going to kill one of us he goes we're standing on the edge of, of the the farm and we're looking out over this ridge and he goes this light 
comes up and he goes, all of a sudden, it looked like a, like a, uh, a door opening. And he goes, it opened up. Three items flew out of it. He goes, they flew, and he pointed to a bunch of trees. And he goes, they flew all over to these trees. And they were right down in the trees, whatever they were looking for. And he said they, they stopped doing that, and they flew back in the hole, and the hole closed up, and it was gone. Mm. So, you got a question? No. This, this particular show, what they were doing is they used a thermal camera. They brought in a, a rabbi, and this rabbi began to say a prayer that was based on portals, that could open portals, he said. Cool. So as he's going through this prayer, they've got this thermal image camera on this place, and all of a sudden, within mere moments, they have a 27-degree drop. The whole front of the building became cold. And he's, now this guy is a, he's an astrophysicist. He's like, I don't know what's causing. This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So they walk down there and the guy's like, dude, it's like I walk into a refrigerator. It's literally that cold here. Mm-hmm. He goes, are we looking at some sort of a portal? I see an eye. I think it looks like an eye. Is that a portal? Maybe we're just only picking up on the residual effects of it. So there's something, again, now they're, they're, they, they're tying it in with Bigfoot. They're tying it in with all the skinwalker animals. These skinwalker animals have the ability to change themselves into dogs or uh, bears or some animal, the mm-hmm. birds. Um, and so all these different events have been going on. Now they're trying to figure out a way to, to measure this. Well, they kept finding all these crazy um, microwave that were bouncing all over the place. And some of them were borderline dangerous. One of the guys, they were told, hey, no digging on the property. And the guy's like, uh, what do you mean no digging on the property? That's ridiculous. This is a ranch. I got yeah. to put poles in the ground. Uh, this is ridiculous. So he decided one day, I'm, I, got, I got work to do. Mm. So he starts to dig a hole. Almost at the same time, he gets his, he said, I got the worst headache that I've ever had. He goes, it, matter of fact, it got so bad, I had to go to the hospital. I got to the hospital, had a bump on the top of my head. He goes, the fatty part of my skin had separated from my skull. Uh. And the doctor said, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Well, he started talking to other guys, and he goes, that's what microwave energy will do to you. So somebody was shooting some sort of a microwave energy beam at you and hit you in the head, and that's how they got created. So on the last show, they started digging, and they finally realized that some of this energy was magnetic. And they, had, they were bringing in different devices and testing it to see what it was. And they started digging again, and some weird things started, started flashing. Mm-hmm. And he said, there's something moving underground. Now, whether this is salt water and it's moving particles, mm-hmm. but we're picking up something that's moving, and it's moving pretty good. Mm-hmm. At one point in the show, they, 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 they dropped 45,000 gallons of water into this crack, and they don't know where the water went. And this guy said, well, this is some sort of a pathway, or maybe it's water, but there's something going on here that's real. So they actually started digging there, and of course, that's where the show ended this week. Mm-hmm. So it just gets... Where do you watch this? At? It's on, it's the, on the History it's Channel. It's on the History Channel. Okay. I, I mean... Is that the one with the guy with the crazy hair? The same that's channel. That's Ancient Aliens. Yeah, oh, that's... Okay. Different yeah. show, same, same, same channel. Yeah. Gotcha. So, like, I tried watching that show. Like, all these stories sound fucking fascinating. And I wanted to watch it. And, I, you know, I watch a lot of documentaries on this stuff. And when I watched the... Fr- my problem with it is I, I want to believe it so bad. But then when I watch an episode of that show on the History Channel... It is just so produced and sensationalized. And they spice it up. Oh, sure. And 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 the graphics we, are the downfall. Of those we know kinds what of it's shows. like. Yeah. You know, we know what it's like. We have experience making those shows. Absolutely, we've done that before. Like they're following a schedule. They have a crew where they have like, okay, at twelve, we're gonna go dig over here, and we got the phone that's gonna go crazy, and we got to do that. And no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, there's so, there's so much now, listen, that no. you have to coordinate. Absolutely, but listen, the phone's going crazy. That's that's nothing you can do. Like when the guy holds his one phone up, he goes. Whatever's happening right now is getting around I my think, password. I think you could do that. You could do that. You could definitely do NASA, that. Listen, NSA can't do it. Yeah, but you can do it with a video. You can do it. You can make a full screen well, video on your uh, phone and you can show it. I, listen, all your apps okay, over. I get that. But listen, these guys are security guys. I could make you one. The one guy. Well, and listen, I'm, again, I'm sure there's guys out there that could do this. But again, these here, here's the problem. And I agree with what you're saying. They're definitely telling these guys what to see. Now, the security guys are not the sharpest bunch in the group. And the last thing you want these guys doing is just having some dumbass thing drop out of his mouth because, hey, bloop, 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 yeah. that has nothing to do with anything. Right. When you say the security guys, like the security guards there? Security guards at the ranch. Yeah, okay. I've got security guys They work there. at the ranch? They work at the ranch. Mm. Okay. And it's, their, his basic job was Bigelow is the owner of it now. Pull up a clip from on YouTube of the show. It's called Skinwalker Ranch well, hold, on the History hold, Channel. Hold on. Hold on. Or the Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch. I got a clip. 
But he can play it on the TV, so we get so we get the uh, viewers. Sounds kind of sexy. Can I send this to you? Skinwalker Ranch. The secrets of Skinwalker Ranch. Dude, Ooh. it Ooh. is. Let it's, me tell you, dude. I it tune was, in. Where is it at? Utah, you said. It's, it's in, in Utah. Utah. Yeah. Is it all inclusive? <laughs> <laughs> so like like Sunnyvale. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen. When you see this guy tell the story <laughs> about the dogs getting crushed into the ground, yeah. Um. Those those are facts. So there's no way you can really dress that up. Is there photos of it? Um, not so much photos of it as there is the people who initially reported it. So there's just reports. Correct. Correct. Now, and the I course, find it hard to believe reports. Well, and again, listen, I'm with you. Even the guy that's out there told you his name is, um, he's a, he's a uh, physicist, astrophysicist. What would you believe? Besides, okay, like, here you go. your own eyes. Here you go. I mean, so, okay, all right. See, he's the astrophysicist right there in the background. Hmm. Sure. This is his chance. This could be a guy. He's one of those guys who made a bunch of money, and he goes, how could I be famous on TV? Yep. I'll buy the Skinwalker Ranch, and I'll sell a show to the History Channel. And he's got Channel. the money to sure. expose it. That but, could be it, bro. But, but listen, listen. That's it. <laughs> but here, now, here's the other side of the coin. When the last family that owned the, the ranch, they found uh, material on the ranch that was extraterrestrial. They took pictures of it. Now, on the last show, they actually brought it up. They brought him into the gun. They go, so what happened to these things? He goes, we sent them to Bigelow, but Bigelow won't give them to us back. Now, Bigelow said in the first show. Because Bigelow's doing real research on it. He's not trying to make sell shows to the History Channel. No, no. Well, listen, he, I, think, I think this History Channel stuff and these sensationalized shows like this do a disservice to what's actually going on. Because I think they make it look like a circus act. They, they, they turn it into a well, circus. Well, don't, listen, don't forget, nobody has that perspective that you do. Because of what you of your job, so when they watch us again, th- what they're trying to do is get the story across without having too much drama. So the the story is something's going on, yeah, and it has been going on for forty years, fifty years. But that's what I that but that show to me is like over dramatized. You know what I mean with the characters, the music, and, and the names, and the music, and setting but everything up. But it's on up. TV; it has to be. Yeah, you got to sell ad space. Is well, that, I mean, that's is what that, it's all about. Is that not, ju- nobody's mean, gonna? You can't sell the History Channel a boring show. Well, I mean, I mean listen, but you can sell that's us. what the History Channel is. It's just boring shit about history. It's history. The history Channel is not boring. That show's sick. It's that's one of my favorites, man. Especially with I stuff mean, like it's, this. It's Smoke better. a few joints, watch that channel. <laughs> 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 it's, it's not better than Trailer Park Boys, but I mean, it's <laughs> next it's, best thing. Yeah, but you're not trying to learn anything, right? Except for how to retire at 35. By the yeah, way, I, I watched the first episode of Trailer Park Boys. That's the most mind-numbing show I've ever seen in my life. It's great, isn't it? It's such a waste of time, but yeah, it's, it's so amazing. good. <laughs> Especially if you're burning a fatty sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I get it. I get it. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, so like I say, the facts are the facts. The Whether, like I say, when you start looking at what, hey, I don't want you to say this, I want you to say that because... You're a knuckle dragger, and you're looking like an idiot. You're making the show look stupid. <clears throat> so the last thing I want to have is a bunch of hillbillies walking around the set. So if I tell you what to say, it's going to put you in a better better system. Again, like you said, you're going to sell commercials now because it looks good. Mm-hmm. But the facts are what they are. The numbers, the information. You know, he's bringing gauges that read these microwave energy. When he got burned because he pulled the top off of a, like, like a sewer, just to look inside, and the guy said, hey, man, don't do that. Don't take that off until we get a reading. And he took it off. He goes, oh, well, never mind now. He had radiation burns on his knuckle. Mm-hmm and above his eye. So he had to have surgery on his knuckle to have some sort of bone growth taken out the second. He goes, yeah, the doctor told me that, that these radiation burns. It's exactly what it looks like when we treat people with cancer on radiation. Same difference. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, okay, so before we got to the Skinwalker subject, you asked, what were we talking about? We were talking about, you asked a question about uh, like Amazon and oh, and the privatization of space flight. And yeah, what was exploration. that? What were we, what was? Do you think with the increased uh, volume of space sightings, UFO, whatever you want to call it, does that coincide with the privatization of space flight, space exploration, and everything that's going on in the private sector to try to own the space experience? And is it easier to influence an individual over entire governments? Is it easier to influence an individual over entire governments? What do you mean by that? So, like, having a sit-down with Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, is that easier to control him or try to work with, like, From the government? alien's perspective? From the alien's point of view. Okay. So, would they be coming and, like, seeing what we're doing here, is it more convenient for them to try to negotiate with an individual who owns a company versus entire the whole government? Maybe Elon mm-hmm. is an alien. Well, there's talk about that as well. I mean, hmm. Aren't we all? Aren't we maybe all? he's one of them. Maybe we are. 
Mm. I, mean, I, I showed Danny of a, a one, you know, of course, the, one of the big talks that I hear all the time are the reptilians. The reptilians. The reptilians. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Reptilians. So I sent Danny. That's one of the most bogus ones, in my opinion. Well, like I said, now. I like that one. Well, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But now. I like now, you say it like it's just like, a, like a kid story. <laughs> well, I like that listen, episode. It's very <laughs> interesting. And listen, until you go here, a guy, a guy in Houston, Texas, has a heart problem. So they bring him in. They realize all of a sudden that he doesn't have a four-chambered heart. He has a two-chambered heart, just like a reptile. Yeah, but so that could just be a defect with a, you know, people, some people are born with. Oh, well, that's convenient. Some people are born How with convenient. two heads. He had a tail, too. He had a tail. He had a tail. Can we find this guy? So I sent you the information. I saw that one guy that was on the Discovery Channel that transformed mm. into a cat. Yeah, but that was surgery. That guy was fucking, fucking. I've seen the guys with the horns. That was they plastic put those balls. surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this guy was like born that way. <laughs> what about on, uh, yeah, guy, something oh, he, about he, Mary? He, that guy had a tail. Yeah, he had a tail. <laughs> well, I couldn't figure out, like I say, how, how where does that heart come from? Where does that, how does that happen? Is that part of the, the genes? A man with the, a two-chambered heart and a tail. Four. Or two. He, uh, like we have a four-chambered heart. He had okay. a two-chambered heart. Okay. Or maybe he was like planted here by the aliens and they didn't give him the correct model of human. <clears throat> I mean, the whole idea of the reptilians, of course, you know, I told you, if you look at, I showed you that guy's eyes. Yeah, it said blinks like a cat. Dude, I mean, th they said when you're looking at these particular individuals and you're looking at them on camera, you can see that they have, they have like, the pupils aren't round. They're kind of straight. Yeah, they're straight. Mm. Like slitted eyes. So, yeah. You know about this shit? That's so sick. I've seen some videos of this on YouTube, yeah. You think it's real? Um... I mean, I couldn't confirm or deny if it's real, but... No, well, I'm asking <laughs> so you. I don't possible. want you to confirm or deny. I want, you, I want to know what you think. I don't know. I think it's, po I think it's possible. I, I don't know. Just watching the video, is Sounds it Sounds like real? you're afraid of commitment here. Yeah. You're really afraid. Well, of I'm, you're really I'm afraid just, to have an opinion. I'm just not sold 100%. Shane's afraid it. to have an opinion on anything. Look, it, uh, would I bet on it? I wouldn't bet on <laughs> it. You wouldn't parlay it. <laughs> Sometimes neutral is a good thing. Though. Okay. <laughs> but, I'm, oh, but I'm open for more... Uh, more data on it, yeah, for sure. You need to see what the odds are. Well, I mean, listen, when you look make a bet. suspect, something's going on. Well, listen, when you look at the Navy talk about it, and now there's even been a show that came out that talked about during Vietnam that there was actually a unit that was a, a river riverine patrol boat that got into a gunfight with one, and he goes, when they started shooting at it, it shot back at them and blew this vehicle out of, or blew the boat out of the water. And when they when the investigation was done, the strange thing was that all the material they found in the boat was from the boat. The rounds that hit the boat were from the boat. Mm. The missile they launched was from the boat. They were able to actually turn this thing around and use it against them. You know, and again, these are these are military guys. It's one of the strangest yeah. stories you ever hear. But all yeah. these, there, there hasn't been one story that I've ever heard that I went like, "Wow, that sounds really interesting and true." It's always the worst or the weirdest thing ever. I mean, when yeah. when, when this group of, of Project Disclosure came try, out, try and the one guy said, duck "Hey, there's 40 different duck, duck, go type go of aliens duck, duck, we've had duck. contact with here," mm. it yeah. sounds ridiculous. Yet there's 40 of these guys. This is all about pressing Congress to listen to this whole project disclosure. We want to disclose the fact that UFOs are real. So each of these guys that got up there, they told these unbelievable stories. And you're like, come on. I mean, really? But yet, there they are, telling the story. Um, they've, they, they were proven of what they did in the military. They proved they had the background. They proved they had the security clearances. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you had the guys there from the FD, or from... Um, uh, uh, the if aviation FAA that were there they were talking about events that had taken place and that the CIA came in and said listen this never happened I was never here and the guy started laughing of course you're here of course it happened we wouldn't be having this meeting if it didn't so there's obviously something going on in the bigger picture whether definitely you know, I've heard we are our technology right now is like 400 years ahead of everybody else so when you look at like David Faber, what do you mean everybody else? Like uh, people the rest of the on world, Earth? the rest of the world. America's okay. technology is four hundred years ahead of what everybody technology? else. What technology? Anti gravity. Okay. I never even heard of anti gravity until this year. Until Bob Lazar. Nope. But Bob Lazar didn't bring it up. No. Uh, he talked about anti gravity, but n uh, nobody ever said we have anti gravity that's here and working, and we're dealing mm -hmm. with it now. Mm -hmm. That whole with David Flavor, mm -hmm. with that Tic Tac. Yep. They say that was ours. We're doing that. Some people say that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the group that just came out said. That's ours. We're going to go and go. We're going to come. But again, what so, group? I don't know. Through the U.S. Out of Who? the Pentagon. It was the Pentagon the saying. The Pentagon it. said that Pentagon. that was ours? That was ours. Mm -hmm. It's all, none of it's ET. No, no, no. There was a, no, no. I think it was, a, the New York Times article just came out two weeks ago. It said that the, the headline of the New York Times article was, um, there's no evidence that this is alien. Correct. But it, it also didn't say, we said, it said they don't know what it is. They came out and said it was ours. Well, 
is it really ours? Who's the, who's it really saying that? But at the end of the day, they're definitely saying it wasn't a, an extraterrestrial. And they, but they also said the New York Times article also said they didn't know what it was. Right. But now all of a sudden, there's more photos of it coming up. Some other girls now have actually videotaped it from. They were sitting on the ground videotaping it. So this is a new video. Videotaping the Tic Tac? Yeah. Where? Flying between some mountains. And she's like, what is that? I don't know what it is. But you look at it and you go, like, that's the Where same thing. Where did you see thing. this? I was on TV about two weeks ago. David Favor, and you say, now that looks at the same thing that Favor saw that day that he was flying the plane. And it's just going, you know, flying right through the mountains and just buzzing along. Is but, there a video of this? Oh, yeah. The girl that, that took it, she didn't know what it was. Now, Nobody said in the show that it was the Tic Tac, but when you look at it, you're like, dude, that's round, it's long, it looks just like what he was talking about. There's no flying, no mm-hmm. wings. And like I said, there's just so much information coming out that it's hard to stay, you know, up on it and stay, you know, where you need to be. To, is that yeah. real? Or Seems is like it? a full-time job. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely a full-time job. Well, because listen, too, there's a lot of fake stuff going on. I mean, they were talking about now about drones and numbers that are going up in the air. They, had, uh, they just recorded 14 UFOs around a Navy ship um, about a month ago. And the Navy still doesn't know what they were, but they were all over the ship. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw that. So, yeah. On the, on the radar so, or on the... You know, um, again, was that us? It? Was it not us? You know, is it, are they trying to do that to see what you know how these guys are going to respond to it from a military perspective? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. My favorite out of all of the recorded encounters, I mean, like, the, the abduction stories are crazy with... Uh, with um, Betty, those are good. Yeah, Betty and I Barney. I want to get abducted. Yep. You see what it's like. I want it. Betty, have you heard the, the Betty and Barney the White story, yeah, or the Betty it. and Barney Hill? <laughs> and then who is the other guy? Uh, who's the dude who we were talking about the other day? Yeah, there's a couple. Well, there's a couple of guys. The guy who was in Arizona who got abducted. Um, we were talking about it on the last podcast. Mm-hmm. Anyways, but out of all of them, my favorite one is the Zimbabwe story because there's like 25 people. Who all had the same exact story? Oh, dude, there's more than 25. Actually, it's like half the school saw it. Yeah. So in the 90s, like 1993 or something, a, a, a spaceship landed in a pl- in a field outside of a school in Zimbabwe, allegedly. And <laughs> all 20 of the kids so saw we don't it. get shadow. Banned. So just like walk out and just like it's just there. Allegedly, thanks, like so we don't car. get shadow banned. No, yeah. here, here's what they did. They actually went back to the school and they brought back all the kids there. The and story said, is fucking bonkers because they ha- they got all, uh, they, a, a psychiatrist came and interviewed all the kids and they were all like between the ages of like five and ten or something. Uh, and they had psychi- draw pictures. And a psychiatrist had them all draw pictures and talk about individually, the individually, individually, right, separate from each other. Mm-hmm. And all the kids had the same exact f- fucking story: how these little creatures, childlike figures, came out of this space, this saucer, and stood there and they were like within 10 feet of them and they all or a couple of them that were closest to the aliens they said that they had these like visions in their head of like technology is bad technology is going to be like the downfall of the human race and there was no like verbal talk but they all like had these thoughts of like how technology is bad and they thought like now they're discovering it they were just they just there's this documentary just put out where they interviewed them now and they're all like in their 30s 40s and um and they're all like you know recalling what happened back then and well, the story they, hasn't changed after all this time the story hasn't changed at all yeah cuz they they interviewed all the kids back th- back in the 90s and they just interviewed them again just now and they all like have been thinking about it ever since and they believe that it was just you know the aliens telepathically communicating with the kids thinking that they could get so- the message across to humanity that whatever well those aliens need to practice what they preach if they're using crazy technology that's what i here. thought a bunch of hypocrites they are a bunch but of maybe hypocrites. ours is going to destroy us like here. terminator whatever everything's going to kill you how no are you gonna, how are yeah. you going to come down in some crazy that's anti-gravity s- <laughs> in some crazy anti-gravity spaceship and travel to, thousands of light years yeah. and be like you know what technology sucks don't use it yeah. well, well here's the interesting thing <clears> one of the guys fly away now oh yeah right well, one of the guys I was talking to, and he was, we were talking about this whole thing, because I don't think they're flying millions of miles. I think they're here. But I also think with these portals, and he said, you know, if you think about, he goes, just think if you were a fish. You were in the water. And you were looking up. And I took my boat and set my boat in the water. Now you can see the bottom of my boat from, from the fish's perspective. Oh, yeah, look at that. He goes, if I pick that boat up, in your mind's eye, that boat just disappeared. So now I bring yeah. that boat over here and I set it down over here. You're like, check that out. How did it get over there now? 
So he goes, so what's ever on the other side of reality is that. And he goes, so these mm. things are moving around and, and sort of that same I- ideology. Right. He goes, but they're here. They've been here all along. They're not traveling millions of miles. They There's more live. dimensions they can travel in. Mm. Yeah. Different yeah. forms of matter that we probably can't even see. Right. Like, right. like water, air, sure. time, gravity. Mm-hmm. Well, they just showed that one of the interesting things was this, this pilot in um, Alaska. So that he's been there for 40 years. He goes, I've never seen anything like this. They had, a, they had a volcano erupt. And he goes, so I'm flying some customers out to a, to a place where they're going to be uh, hunting. And he goes, I look over the volcano. And he goes, we kind of been, we're getting a, a, a big path because it had been put, puffing out some smoke. And he goes, but something in a cloud that was, a, that was trying to hide in the cloud but was doing a terrible job at it, you could see it. Like, like a fat guy trying to hide behind a tree? That's exactly mm-hmm. it. So he started taking pictures of it until it went into the volcano. Damn. And then later, he said about five minutes after that happened, this big green orb came out of it. He took a picture of this green orb. He goes, listen, I'm not saying they're UFOs. I'm not, I don't know what they are. Mm-hmm. But it, whatever was going on was going on. It was definitely a, a for sure. So I think the orbs, um, just like we saw, because they're, they're seeing more identical to what we saw that day uh, on other TV shows now with drones. So whatever the drone is able to do, whether the drone is making a noise it likes to hear, because all these things... That one that you took the video of changed directions and came up towards that. Remember, you mm-hmm. thought, hey, someone's shooting at my drone. Yeah. And even when I was watching this, somebody said that. I laughed. Yeah. Um, because this, whatever, the first one came by it close, and the second one, like, dude, came by it real close. Right. And I just refer to them as dirty cotton balls. Mm-hmm. But I think those, whatever they are, is that's part of the earth, man. The earth is a living entity, and mm-hmm. they are here protecting the earth, whatever they are. Mm. Um, because th- they seem to be always. I've got, I'm trying to get this from Tyler. I took a video about four years ago of this thing. It was night. It was uh, uh, in the wintertime. Very cool out. The sky was crystal clear. Mm -hmm. And there was this ball of light. And it was literally looked like if you had a laser and you were just kind of waving it around. And I'm like, what the hell is that? So the one thing that I noticed, if I took my camera out and I tried to follow it, what I noticed was if I took that camera and held it like on a planet and I moved it, it looked like the light was moving. And I was moving, actually moving the camera, right. so that's not going to work. So I had to position the camera to get this thing to fly through it so that you could actually see it. Mm-hmm. Right. And I managed to do that. So whatever this thing is, and, and, and it was funny, I had the feeling like it's having a good time. It's fun. It's, it's like it's playing in the, in the wind, mm-hmm. whatever this thing was. But that's what I feel these things are. Now, the, the, the extraterrestrials that are coming here, if you go back and start looking at the Anunnaki and you start really looking at the Anunnaki hard, they talk about they took us as humans because the Anunnaki and the Sumerians didn't want to be uh, mining all this gold. Um, they ate gold back then because they said, listen, our bodies are electric. And by eating gold, man, it just absolutely makes your body the most uh, mm. perfect, you know, the way you're, the system operates, just absolutely perfect. That's what I tell myself when I drink a bottle of gold, gold slogger. Sl- that, well, there you go. <laughs> so it's, it's that gold slogger doing it, baby. So he said That's so. That's expensive. So when they, when they would do that, he said, so they decided they didn't want to dig for this gold anymore, so they started breeding with us. And he goes, what they did was they changed the DNA, and they made it so that we thought about nothing but gold. Well, we really haven't changed a whole mm-hmm. lot. We still think about gold today. Mm-hmm. You know? So, More so about Bitcoin. Definitely about Bitcoin. Where's that going right now, anyway? <sighs> nowhere. Down and up, down <laughs> and up, down and up. going nowhere Not fast. The moon? No. No moon? Yeah. It was it was halfway there and then it took a U turn. <laughs> I forgot my keys. <laughs> yeah, damn it. Left Elon my phone bailed. at home. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it was Elon and uh, Saturday Night Live really tanked Bitcoin. Oh, it sucks. Did they really? I'm surprised that he did that because he's such a big guy involved with Bitcoin. Yeah. No, he said it wasn't. Uh, it, it wasn't energy environmentally. Oh, yeah. environmentally friendly. The way they mine it. The carbon. All yeah. this is so much blah. computer processing. Power. But he, but he did shout out Dogecoin. I think. Yeah, was, yeah, that's what he wants to win. Yeah, Wait, I laughed too because too. he said something in his last interview, and somebody yelled something from the crowd, and he goes, "I don't know. I think it's 420." Yeah, and everybody kind of chuckled through the crowd because when he smoked weed on Joe Rogan, oh, yeah. everybody was like, "Oh, oh yeah. you know, your stock's going to drop now." I'm like, "His stock is going to drop me for the yeah, exactly, yeah. drop for the day." Come on, man, the whole yeah. weed thing is ridiculous. So, but there's there's talk now that he is you know an extraterrestrial guy, mm-hmm. and and it's no, but he's not. He he. Uh, when whenever people ask him about extraterrestrials or UFOs or aliens or whatever, he thinks it's bogus. He like brushes it off. He's like, I don't even think about that. Oh, because I don't want to be looking at my genes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Tell you whatever. I want you to get away from me, dude. Right, so I'm nothing right. of the kind. I don't even believe in that yeah, shit. Yeah. So it's funny that a guy like him doesn't believe in it. He's like he's like if he's like if you can't find a a, a picture or a video that looks like it's at least shot on a modern day iPhone, he's like. 
you can stop wasting my time with it. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's just mm. part of the propaganda. Yeah, that's kind of suspect that he's like flying around in space, not like personally, but he's got all this space. He's work got a going car on, in space waiting he, for him. And he doesn't believe in aliens. I'm not buying it. Oh, there's got to be more to it. I mean, there just can't be just us. When yeah. you start looking at the bigger picture and what's really going on. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, we talked about this before. I've never had a nightmare. I've never, I don't have nightmares now. I couldn't even tell you what a nightmare is. Um, but mm. when I was like 11, I had something come in my room one night. And it was more than one. They were short. They were small. And it wasn't this big head stuff. These kind of looked like, this sounds funny, it sounded like, like a log. And uh, they had real long, flat heads. And I don't know, there was probably th- six of them maybe that came in my room. Hmm. I tried to scream for my mom. Why my mom? I don't know. You think you would scream for your dad in that case, but I was going to yell for my mom. And I still remember today, but mm-hmm. I could not get it to come out. And it sounds ridiculous, but one of them put a raincoat on and was dancing around my bed in it. Mm. I mean, what, what, why would they do that? Doesn't sound scientific at all. I mean, was it really somebody in my room then? I don't know, but it's the only time, and here I'm, I'm 60 years old. It's the only dream I ever had that I still think about today. Yeah. So, you know, did I have a, was it an illusion? I, I dude, I could have told you I was wide awake. I don't remember what I did the next day. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember, remember when I remembered this. I don't remember if I told my parents about it. But it was definitely one of those odd things that I, you know, listen, and I've never had a nightmare. I don't, I don't have it today. I think about this often, hmm. you know, but I, I couldn't tell you, hey, yeah, the, by, you know, the, it was definitely an alien. It, yeah, yeah. it wasn't anything traditional that you see or you hear about. And I was, I was 11, so I wasn't really predisposed to even know about that stuff then. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't really interested in it then. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't until I was 14, we became a Boy Scout, and we were kind of, you know, doing the whole stargazing thing that you started asking questions. And then... That's crazy that you that you remembered that for so long. Yeah, I mean, here I am. I'm sixty, and I was eleven. I mean, come on. So you know, again, was it real? I don't know. But those are the type of events that start to form your reality to kind of make you think. Okay, what's going on here? What is this really all about? You know, the day that I saw that thing up up uh, along the the radio tower, um, looking at that kind of all. What the hell is that? I mean, it's got to be something. I mm-hmm. saw it. You know, it was so a, the guy that was abducted. Uh, in the 70s, Travis Walton. Travis Walton. Travis Walton, the guy who was abducted and then reappeared. I mean, that is uh, also a extremely detailed, you know, impossibly, it's impossible to cut that, to discredit that story. It's well, especially because of you, all the people that saw it. Well, dude, the guys the guy were there. Rogan that you showed yeah, me? Yeah, that's what I was showing you, yeah. Um, yeah. The interesting thing about him is he also has similar stories to, like, your story about in your bedroom. Like, he has a story about after he had kids that he told... That how he woke up out of a dead sleep one night, running full speed to his kid's bedroom. Like he, I, I don't know how that happens. It's never happened to me. I've never woken up in the middle of the night running. But he, he says he's never slept walk before. And he was running to his kid's room and he woke up and he just, he finds himself in his son's room. And his son is like, they have the bunk beds. And his kid was like halfway off the bunk bed with his neck stuck between the railing. So his kid was like a minute from being suffocated to death. Wow. And he said he like saved his kid's life. If it, if he wouldn't have got there five minutes earlier, he would have been dead. And see, um, what makes that guy so credible? And he has these stories like this, like yeah, dude. people He's like credible. him. He, oh, his story is super credible about the abduction. But that story, obviously, you can't prove. Well, listen, but, I, but it's just interesting that he has those. It wasn't even his story that I heard that made me go like, oh wow. It was the guys who left him there when they saw that thing grab him and he was back arch. They said, "We're the fuck out of here, man." Yeah. And they left. So for me. Because those guys were all ashamed of themselves. When they first left him, they didn't, they didn't even want to tell anybody they left him. Yeah. They were all ashamed that they had left him out there in the middle of this woods. They, they, so initially they thought, hey, maybe these guys murdered him. Mm-hmm. And I think he came, it was either three days or six days later is when he popped back up mm-hmm. and everything. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, like, hey, there he is. So to me, again, very credible. When you talk about Betty and Barney. Yeah. Again, dude, very credible. Um, I remember hearing them about them in the 70s. They, when they first came out with that whole thing. And it was out, I think it came out in the 60s, really, but mm-hmm. I remember hearing about it in the 70s. And, of course, being a black and white couple like that, a mixed-race couple, the last thing you want to do, and especially in the 70s, is come up with some crazy story to make you look like some crazy right. black guy. You know? Right, mm-hmm. right. So he stuck to the story. Um, and then, you know, as time went on, they were actually bringing more, like he said, um, one of the odd things with him was that he didn't understand originally, because he's still trying to put everything together, was the top of his shoes, the toes, were all dragged through the shoe. It was all, they were gone. There was no leather there. And the, right at the very tip of the shoes. Mm-hmm. And when they put him under um, to talk about the event. Hypnosis he, or whatever. Under hypnosis, 
he said that he floated up, and as he was going forward, he was dragging his toes along the ground to the ship. Hmm. And he didn't remember that until he said it. And he said, oh, my God, because he had a picture of the shoes. And he showed, here's the picture of the shoes. Right. She, they tried to take her dress off of her, but they didn't know what a zipper was. Mm-hmm. So they started tearing the dress and pulling on it. Didn't know whether it was like a second skin on her or what it was. Right. And so when she got back, her dress had all these weird tear marks in it. And their, their dress is still around, and I think the shoes are still around yeah. also. So, I remember the, the thing that stuck out to me the most about the Betty and Barney story was that she remembered asking one of the things that abducted her. where they're, She's like, where, who are you and where are you from? Or where are we? And, she, and the, the being responded to her like telepathically and said, if you don't know where you are right now, it would be, a way, it would be worthless for me to tell you where I'm from. Like, Actually having a conversation. Right. You know, they stuck a needle in her stomach. Yeah. And she said she got all freaked out when that happened because she's like, oh, you know, what's this all about? And the guy said to her in his mind, hey, the warning's not going to hurt. She goes, it still hurt. <laughs> but he was talking to her mentally mm-hmm. and said, hey, you know, this isn't going to hurt. You'll be okay when it's all said and done. Mm-hmm. Um, they took semen from Barney, you know, and he, he didn't want to tell anybody that. It's like, you know, that's weird. Did how, did they, say, how did they take the semen? Say, how did they extract <laughs> the oh, semen? Oh, yeah, that was a hell of a visual. <laughs> like like a long finger to tickle the prostate? Or? Do you like this? Yeah. How about that? <laughs> uh, probably just, uh, listen, it probably gave him a good shock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they couldn't Got just, like, wave out. a hand over it? And, like, probably. I, like, I, like I said, I'd hope to never find out personally. Like, don't touch my junk. Would you? What would you do if you saw... If you saw what Travis Walton saw, if you if you saw a saucer hovering fifty feet above the ground, what would you run to it and hope that it's uh, that it vacuums you up, or would you? What would you do? I definitely wouldn't run to it. I think I would be. I, I would eventually say to myself, "Aha, I was right." Mm-hmm. I think that's the first thing I would say. But I would definitely, I'm too too aware of like radiation and how these things are flying, or. You know, when, when, when the one that they had in Britain, when the, when the military... But Travis, they cured him. They, that's why they pulled him up, because he ran in, and he, hit the, he, got, he got hit all that radiation, right, which would have killed him. Sure. And his theory is they brought him up just so they could fix him and heal him, and then they dropped him back off. I mean, listen, if they grab me, that's a whole other story, but if I have any say-so on the matter, is I'm going to be standing as far away from you as I can stand. So you're not going to try to get beamed up? No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Yeah, beam me up. Like, you just want like a picture and proof, uh, not like. I just want them to wave at me beam. through the window. Hey. Okay. We're good. So maybe if I could bring my gun with me, would be okay. Yeah. Do you think that would help you? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> what if you get up there and then there's like one of those stickers that says like no guns allowed. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn it. Damn it. I can see that. No well, human guns. I'm I, trying I think to see he, there's some space weed up there. Yeah, what's that about? Like some well, space drugs? It's funny, man. You know, I read a story. I wrote a book called Janissaries. Uh-huh. I was in the Navy. And it was kind of bizarre, man. It's about a, a military group. They go to Cuba to do this. This uh, They're going to kill like the leader of Cuba. It's very classified. They get brought in and they get landed. What they don't realize was they were just set up and the, the U.S. was going to leave them there and let them get killed. And it was going to be this big, you know, coup de crawl that was trying to take place and this is what happened mm-hmm. and so while these these americans are they're fighting i said dude i don't think anybody's coming for us i can't get anybody on the radio the ship lands and they're all like what the hell is that he goes i don't know man but the door opens up and, and a voice says come on let's go and the guy's like dude i'm not going are you gonna stay here so there's there's this there's this command argument going on these guys are gonna get wiped out by the cubans so they finally decide to get on this thing and they all get on it they all jump into it and it takes off and they're all kind of talking to each other looking around like what where the hell are we at What's up, world? You just watched a clip from one of our exclusive Patreon episodes. That's right. You can get weekly, pure, uncut content straight from the jungles of Colombia. If you want to watch the full episode, make sure you go to patreon.com slash concrete videos. Peace.